The liberal corporate media, it's just hanging on by a thread, man. I mean, we've seen in recent years, they have struggled in every metric. They're struggling in viewership. They're struggling in advertising revenue. And of course, I mean, those two things are closely related, but they're also struggling more and more each day with their favorability rating. I mean, less and less people trust the media every single day. And it's no secret why. And I'm going to show you Tom Cotton. He went on Dana Bash yesterday and he absolutely yet again crushed the ball. I mean, he calls her out to her face for protecting Kamala Harris. And he's right. But first, I'm going to show you here. She is trying to explain that she's not protecting anyone. It's just that Democrats just don't know how to answer questions. Did you get a sense that they were ready for these kinds of questions? And, you know, this is, uh, you know, obviously Kamala Harris is going to have a debate next week with mm -hmm. Trump. I feel like she's going to need to have better answers yeah. going forward if she has any chance of success. You had to ask it multiple times questions twice because the answers weren't necessarily answering the question. They were, they, they were answering what they wanted the question to be, yeah. which is often which is what, politicians what politicians do. do. But I, I don't know, it came off as a little evasive at times, mm -hmm. I thought. Now, as is often the case these days, whenever there's a big high profile interview like this, you took some heat from the left, as you noted, some heat from the right. What did you make of that? Criticism. I mean, the right, their problem was that you didn't necessarily, they felt, mm -hmm. hold her down on some of her more nebulous policy positions. Mm -hmm. what, what would you say to that? I think you just said, I, I tried. Right. I mean, you can't force somebody to, to answer a question. And I asked, I asked a follow up. I tried to get more um, into the nitty gritty and get the answer. And sometimes, I mean, my experience in doing interviews is that once you ask once, fine, twice, fine, three times, if you don't get it as a clear answer, that's kind of your answer. Yeah, so it's, so it's not her fault, man. She tried. She tried to ask questions. She tried to do her best. And you probably remember that. You know, she asked Kamala, why have you changed your position on fracking? And when Kamala said, I haven't changed anything, I was never against fracking, Dana Bash said, oh, all right, my mistake. I tried. I mean, that's it's ridiculous, man. It's pretty funny stuff. But if you remember what her trying to ask questions of a Democrat candidate actually looked like, compare that to when she tried to ask questions of Tom Cotton or basically any Republican, actually. But but Tom Cotton, man, what was she thinking inviting this guy on? Topic, And that is something that the Justice Department uh, said this week. They detailed a Russian government effort to stoke divisions in the U.S. using front organizations and social media prominent right-wing influencers like Dave Rubin and Benny Johnson, uh, who have ties to Tenet Media. Now, that's a company that the Justice Department says was being funded by Russian operatives. You sit on the Intelligence Committee. How worried are you that right-wing influencers, people who do have an impact on your constituents, are being funded either directly or indirectly by the Russian government in order to make an impact on this election? Well, first off, Dana, we haven't been in session, so I haven't seen any intelligence about this matter. I've only seen the allegations I've read in the newspaper. Um, people should not knowingly take money from the government of Russia or Iran or China or any other adversarial nation to try to influence the election. But I also think it's fair to say that uh, a few memes or videos in the vast sea of political commentary is not going to make much of a difference in this election, nor has it in past elections as well. What did make a difference in the last election is the lies about Hunter Biden's laptop that more than four dozen former intelligence officials lied about in the middle of that campaign. And most networks, to include this one, bought that lie hook, line, and sinker. That did make a difference in the election. But I think a few videos or commentaries, which again, you shouldn't do if you're out there in the business of commentating on elections, um, is not going to make a difference in the vast sea of commentary we see. It sounds to me like you're downplaying the fact that Vladimir Putin is using people like uh, Dave Rubin, whose show you went on in February, as a tool for his propaganda. If you're not following what she's talking about, and there's a real good chance that you're not because this story isn't really getting any traction because it's so stupid, but the Biden-Harris Justice Department, they just indicted some Russians because they allege that those Russians funneled millions of dollars to a media group in America called Tenet Media. 
a media company that has paid quite a few right-leaning pundits, right? And and all of this is so that the media can frame it just like she's doing here, that Vladimir Putin is using the American right wing to push his propaganda. That's what they say, right? But there's a couple interesting things to be aware of. The media company hasn't been charged, they haven't even been accused, and neither have any of the podcasters. And even more interesting than that, the list of Kremlin propaganda is pretty hilarious, man. Apparently, it's Russian propaganda to say that the American economy is struggling. And it's Russian propaganda to say that the border is broken. And it's Russian propaganda to say that Kamala Harris is going to ban fracking. The Department of Justice, essentially, they want you to believe that anyone who doesn't vocally support Kamala Harris is some kind of paid Russian stooge. (laughs) The entire right wing is co-opted by Russians and can't be trusted no matter what they say. Never mind that people are actually struggling financially and that illegal immigration is a major concern and that Kamala Harris really does want to ban fracking. Apparently those things, they, they, they can both be true and Russian propaganda, apparently. And Tom Cotton, he's just a stooge because he went on Dave Rubin's show. This, that'll catch you up. It's, it's completely insane. So I, I'm not downplaying Vladimir Putin's designs or Xi Jinping's designs or the Ayatollah's designs to try to influence our election. But using money, using money to try to promote memes or videos on the internet is not exactly going to make a huge difference. Again, you shouldn't knowingly do that. I don't know if any of these but people you, knowingly did it. Do you know it. young but, people who but, get, they all, look, some people only get their information from those memes and but, videos. But Dana, what, what would really would, would be catastrophic is if a foreign government, say, hacked into the voter registration system during voting, or hacked into election machines and erased votes, or turned off the electricity in a big city on election day. Those are things that are serious threats. A few videos and are those active threats? Are you wor- uh, is that I am worried about those kind of threats, sure. Is that based on what you're being briefed on? I, it's based on the vulnerabilities that all of our infrastructure around the country has. That, that worries me a lot more than a few videos or memes. Again, this is the kind of thing that foreign governments like Russia does, and no one should knowingly and wittingly partake in it, but it's really not all that consequential in the grand scheme of things. I am honestly surprised that they keep inviting a guy like Tom Cotton on any of these shows, right? I mean, the guy, he's got such a calm, logical, real sensible demeanor, right? And it's gotta be a pretty interesting experience to be one of the CNN faithful viewers, and you're watching this guy, right? I can't imagine that they don't end up just nodding along with him. I mean, because he's more or less, he's always correct. And the things he says, they're rooted. They're not partisan. They're just rooted in common sense. And the crazy thing, I mean, this whole propaganda story they're pushing here is itself a kind of propaganda. And I promise you, I mean, our own American media, this has got to be true. I promise you, our own American media is perpetrating a far more egregious propaganda, propaganda campaign on us than the Russians could ever freaking dream of. I want to ask you about another topic that is very much in the news this week, and that is uh, the uh, shooting in, in, in Georgia. Uh, we've all been seeing the texts, the heartbreaking texts, especially as parents uh, of students saying, I love you to their parents, students using their shirts off their backs to try to save their teacher. Uh, Republican vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance said after the shooting, quote, I don't like that this is a fact of life, adding, we don't have to like the reality that we live in, but it is the reality we live in. Do you accept that school shootings like this are just a way of life now? No, absolutely not. And J.D. Vance doesn't either. He said that he doesn't want them to be a fact of life. And this week, the Associated Press got caught distorting that quote from him so bad that they had to retract it. But here's what we also know about that shooting, even as we're still gathering all the facts. It wasn't as bad as it might have been because there was a police officer on the school premises that was able to neutralize the shooter. Mm -hmm. Kamala Harris wants to take police officers out of school. She said it in the past. That's her position. It's not surprising because she's consistently taken positions against law enforcement throughout her career as a San Francisco liberal. If that police officer hadn't been there, if Kamala Harris had gotten her way, many more students and teachers might have been killed. She was attacked when she ran for president in the Democratic primary. They were calling her Kamala Cop because she was the opposite of what you were saying. But I just want to stay on. Pretty interesting thing to note. You know, the whole day that we're attacking her and calling her Kamala Cop. 
it wasn't Republicans. They were the law enforcement hating leftists. I mean, it's it's funny the way these people like to rewrite and revise basically everything. But it works like this. I mean, someone in 2020 called Kamala Harris Kamala cop. And now in 2024, that means that Republicans think Kamala Harris is too tough on crime. Right. Which is amazing. I mean, they, they usually they're going to they usually play the clip of Tulsi Gabbard talking about Kamala being too tough on marijuana crimes. But that's not what that was about at all. No one has a problem with her jailing people for drugs. People have a problem with the fact that she was tough on marijuana crimes and then later admitting to smoking the very, very same drug the entire time she was doing it. Right. But this this is what these people do. I mean, in the same segment that they talk about Kremlin propaganda, every talking point they push is lies. I mean, you just you can't make it up, man. And that's why no one trusts these people. This topic of school shootings, because you're right, it could have been so much worse. And they do have measures in place in this school. But the fact that there are mental health problems, and we don't know exactly what was going on with this 14 year old, I mean, 14, um, but there are mental health problems all across the world right now. It's bad. The difference between other countries and this country is that it is being expressed with gun violence. Is, is it not time to, to figure out a way to mitigate that part of the equation when it is affecting our children so often? I'm not sure how he's going to answer this, but just consider the question you just heard, man. She basically just asked. She said, we have so much mental illness. Shouldn't we just disarm everyone? I mean, just do they, I don't know how they don't hear the words that they're saying. I mean, these people have absolutely no desire to address in any real meaningful way the actual root cause, which is supposed to be their thing. But apparently to Dana Bash, mental illness among young people is indeed just a fake quote J.D. Vance, just a fact of life. And the solution that she sees is to allow everyone to get crazier while disarming anyone who's still sane. It's insane. Well, I think one way to mitigate that is to enforce the laws we have on the books. Donald Trump did that. We had a severe crackdown on criminals using guns. Since Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have taken office, they have deprioritized that. They haven't focused on enforcing the laws that we have on the book. They focus on trying to take guns away from law-abiding citizens. That's not going to solve our crime problem. What will solve our crime problem is actually cracking down on gun crimes. They've directed U.S. attorneys in many cases not to pursue gun charges because those gun charges come with stiff mandatory minimums, which Kamala Harris so opposes. So are these, are these some of, I mean, do you see any action in the, in the offing at all in the wake of this once again, or is it just going to be enforce the laws on the books? Well, again, enforcing laws on the books is one, de- one way to stop gun crime. Uh, another way is to keep police officers at schools. Many schools across the country have police officers, but Kamala Harris and her friends on the radical left were successful in getting police officers out of many schools during the BLM rights in 2020 and the, uh, what followed. So Congress won't do anything? Well, look, most, most law enforcement happens at the local level. These police officers are not federal agents, they're local police de- uh, department officers. But again, Kamala Harris and her friends on the radical left who oppose law enforcement, they wanted to get them out of schools. That's one way. It's not the only way, and it's not a silver bullet, but that's one way to help protect these schools, among many others. Before I let you go, if Donald Trump wins, do you want to be defense secretary? I'm focused on Donald Trump winning, just as he's focused on winning. There's plenty of time for him to put together a great team after the election, which I know he will. Somehow I had a feeling that was going to be your answer, but I thought I would try anyway. Senator, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Dan. I really appreciate it. Without getting too hooked on the really, really fantastic idea that Dana Bash just had of a defense secretary, Tom Cotton, let's just think about the way this interview really went and what Dana Bash actually trying really looks like. You know, when when she was trying to interview Kamala Harris, she got walked on. She asked multiple choice questions. She led the answers wherever she could. But with Tom Cotton, she hits him with the fact that he's a Russian stooge and the right wing is co-opted by the Kremlin. She hit him with the lie about J.D. Vance not caring about kids. And she intimated that Republicans being opposed to disarming law abiding citizens means that they don't ever want to protect kids when, by her own admission, the real problem is unaddressed mental illness. I mean, just just think about that. The left has no problem with your child experiencing an increasing degree of mental illness as long as they're not armed and as long as they don't 
fall for any Russian propaganda about a struggling economy and a bad border policy, right? This is who these people are. And you got to be thankful that guys like Tom Cotton exist, man, and that they're out there and they're willing to represent us. And honestly, my opinion is awesome as a defense secretary, Tom Cotton sounds. I mean, the guy is one of our best and brightest senators, and we need people just like him crafting good laws and protecting us from the many, many, many bad ones, right? We need him in the Senate doing right what he's doing. But that's all I got, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you haven't already, be a part of our growth. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, share the channel. I'll see you in the next one.